This is Matt Wright, and he's a crusher. Even within professional climbers, Matt is a rare breed. He's one of the few true all-rounders that climb at the bleeding edge in multiple disciplines. V15 in bouldering, 9A in sport climbing, and E11 in trad climbing. And he dabbles a little bit in free soloing too. Matt just loves climbing hard, and he's bold as f However, today, in this episode, Matt will face his most daunting challenge of his climbing career to date. Coaching this Gumby. Oh! Despite being an ultra elite athlete, Matt actually enjoys coaching. He runs an online coaching service which anyone can sign up for. I had a quick call with Matt and his confidence in his coaching is as bold as his climbing. He said, I'll be noticeably better after one session with him. And I'll tell you now that I was pretty certain that was impossible because in bouldering anyway, I am plateauing hard. I am absolutely stuck with my bouldering. I got to V4 and what I thought might be V5, but looking back, maybe those weren't V5s. And I've just never really sent anything harder. Even though my sport grades continue to go up, bouldering just doesn't seem to budge for me. And quite frankly, I've kind of got pissed off with it. I just don't feel like I'm getting any better. Week in, week out, I'm at the same level, even though I'm still getting physically fitter and stronger. So it was safe to say that I was dubious with the idea that two or three hours of talking to someone would make me climb harder. Like, I can't get stronger in one session. But I arrived at the session with an open mind and was prepared to follow along with whatever Matt had me do. So we met up at my local at Block 10 in Dundee for a coaching session. So first off, what we're going to do, he's going to look at how Mike does his typical warm-up and I'm going to encourage him to do a better warm-up than what he usually does. Uh, so warm I, don't do, I don't do any warm-up. <laughs> Mike doesn't do any warm-ups. Matt walked me through his regular warm-up for limit bouldering. We used ultra light weights to get our heart rates up, followed by scapular pulls with our feet on the ground, stretches, horse squats, press-ups and fingerboarding. Matt was very loose with how he warms up, following no specific routine simply warming up intuitively and focusing on anything that feels tight or achy. But this is a very slow, gentle process. We spent what felt like a long time on the fingerboard, going from extremely light no hangs to a 5 second, almost max hang over about 5 sets. That's a lot more fingerboarding than I normally do to warm up. After 15 to 20 minutes of warming up off the wall, I was feeling good. This episode is sponsored by Rungney. If you haven't heard of them already, they're an apparel and chalk brand created by Magnus Midbow. One of the cool things that Rungney is doing right now is supporting smaller climbing channels here on YouTube. Climbing is still quite a niche subject and although it's growing at a huge rate, there's still not as many eyeballs on climbing videos as there are on say gaming or something like that. So it can be hard to make ends meet if you're a climbing creator. But Rungney really do see the value that smaller channels add to the community and they are showing their support by sponsoring videos like this. You probably know of Rungney primarily because of their chalk, but they also are an apparel company who make excellent clothing. Right now I'm wearing the oversized layback hoodie, which is immensely comfortable, alongside the high baller pants, which I've been wearing for almost every day for six months now. All the kit that Rungni makes is of a really, really high quality and excellent fit. But the most important thing to me is it is comfortable whilst looking smart. I've been using the Magdust Chalk, the best in the game for six months now. But what I'd actually recommend you try, if you haven't already, is the Mag Juice, the Liquid Chalk. I know a bunch of people have already written off Liquid Chalk, but try this stuff. So what I've tr been trying when it's really hot and sweaty is to put a base layer of the Liquid Chalk on and then chalk up normally from there. I know I was put off liquid chalk because of the smell, that awful smell that most brands have, but Mag Juice, it doesn't have that awful smell. Give it a try. So if you want to get yourself some new threads and support a company that is helping out your favorite creators here on YouTube, check out Rungney. My viewers can get 15% off their order with the code Mike Boyd. There's a link in the description, so check out Rungney. Thank you very much to Rungney for sponsoring this episode and creators like me. Right, back to the video. Once you've warmed up the kind of, you know, the, the kind of injury risk areas and you've got your body temperature nice and warm, um, the next thing then is to start warming up yourself on the wall. Mm -hmm. So 
what I would say is try and make this as easy as you possibly can to begin with. And just the slower you make your warm up, the better. Realistically, you should expect your warm up to take about half an hour. So 15 minutes. 15 minutes over there, 15 minutes over here. But, and what I would say as well is it's really important with climbing to mimic the warm up to the to the activity that you're going to be doing. Okay. So if you're warming up doing some lead climbing, you need to make sure your energy systems are warm as well. So there's no point going boulder into warm up for being on uh, lead climbs. Really? If you, yeah. If you're doing like really sustained lead climbs, you're going to be getting really pumped. You don't want to do like a warm up in the bouldering area and then go and get on your hardest sport route. The best thing to do is if you go lead climbing, warm up with some lead routes. If you go bouldering and you're looking to do some limit bouldering, focus on bouldering as right. you warm up. And I've actually got a really great drill for this that I give okay. to all my clients. Um, so I call it the three second hold drill. And all that you're doing is quite simply hold your hand and hover it over the hold for three seconds before you take it. Yeah. And what you're looking to do is oh, get like in an eye. Touching. Yeah, so you don't, it doesn't matter if you touch it, but you're the not. aim is to make sure that you're in a perfect body position whilst you're in that, like kind of hovering your hand. Okay. So what you're looking at, straight arms, you need to make sure your arms are as straight as they can be, three points of contact on the wall, so no barn door in and weird yep. stuff like that. And then your hips close to the wall as well. Okay. And if you try and focus on those three elements, you're gonna climb better on the wall and okay. you're, gonna make, you're gonna make it more efficient, you're gonna save a lot of energy and it's gonna help you a lot when you start operating at your limit. It's really strange to do it like that. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? So you're actually like, your warm up is, is to get warm, but also just to improve technique as well. That's when you're doing your drills and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's the best time to do them. So you don't have like a day where you're just doing drills? No. You're, all, your, all your like technical practice is in your warm up. Yeah, exactly. Ah. It's the best time to do it because the thing is as well, if you do it at the start of your session, it improves your habits throughout the yeah. session as well. Okay. So, because like what we don't want to do is start then going on limit boulders and then start think, thinking about technique. And did you feel like your body was starting to, did you feel like you were almost like, almost going this way? Uh, and you're having to try hard to stop that from happening? Yeah. The reason why that's happening is because you're not utilizing your three points of contact in the most ideal way. Okay. You're looking at making sure your hips are perpendicular to the wall. So this is hips parallel to the wall. Yep. This is hips perpendicular to the wall. So are you always trying to be perpendicular? Yeah, because like, look at, see my body position in there, really close to the wall, center of gravity is really close. I could hang here pretty much all day yeah. and not use much energy at all. So by making sure that your opposite foot is directly below your pivot hand, this is the pivot hand as we're gonna call it. Yeah. We're making sure then that that third piece, that third point of contact is actually helping you to resist yeah. that barn door in. So if I use this hand, yeah. I should use the opposite foot. Yeah. And now does that feel better? Yeah, and if I use this foot, I have to do that to start. Yeah. <laughs> to start. Okay, I, I see. What, right, okay. If you practice this during your warm up, whilst you just focusing on easy climbing you, you know you need to warm up anyway so just yeah. by building up that mileage on easy climbs and focusing on your technique it's the best time to do it okay. after this drill we climbed a few boulders up until one level below my flash grade and then and only then were we warmed up this warm-up took 30 to 40 minutes in total with more than half of it off the wall this is completely different to what i normally do First of all, it takes three times longer, and secondly, it is much more deliberate, slow, gentle, and includes drills. But I did feel ready to climb hard. Now we get to the good stuff. The proj. So. This is so steep. Yeah. <laughs> it's steep, isn't it? So, we're going to look at this yellow. When it seems to me like this one should be probably at the, the very tip of your limit right now. Yeah, which is yeah, good. And yeah. we're, we're assuming it's around, what, V5? I think it's about, it should be about a V5. Yeah. Which seems like it's a perfect level. And your goal is V6. So, um, you know, building some experience on some harder climbs is going to be really important. Yeah. What I want to talk to you a little bit right now is focusing on good tactics that help your project. 
So a particular thing that I really, really like demonstrating with people is something called the top-down approach right. to projecting. And this is brilliant. It's an absolute game changer for me. I, I use it on my climbing all the time. So what you will often see people doing is when they'll approach a hard climb, they'll pull on the start holds, they'll get two moves in, and then they'll go, ah, that's too hard for me, I'm never going to do it. Yeah. Well, it's the worst thing you can do. No <laughs> professional climber just walks up to a V17, pulls on the start holds, and goes straight to the top. You know, they are, what they're doing is they're breaking the climb down into manageable chunks. So the way to do that is firstly, just have a little bit of a feel on what you think might be the harder sections. So for me, I'm looking at this thinking like, this looks like the harder section. Yeah. You know, what you don't want to be doing is pulling straight on the start and entering this bit and just being absolutely boxed, not having a clue what you're doing. What you want to do, focus on the individual moves, get it solid. And then when you feel like you've kind of built a bit of an idea of how the moves go, Pull on as high as you can, and you can even use all the holds to get up into higher positions and just work the route from the top down. So what you want to do, focus on the last two moves, get them sorted, then really? add one move into it, go one move lower. Okay. Use any holds you can to get into it and add one more move into it, then go a move lower and add another move into it. And until you get to the top on each of those individual links, you don't move on to another link. Okay. So like, what if I can do the top and then I can't do the bottom though? Well, <laughs> that, the cool thing is, well, no, because what we're looking at here is we're not looking at ticking the climb. We're not looking at you just sending. We're yeah. looking at you building better habits and actually improving uh, your experience and your mileage on harder problems. Okay. So forget sending. It doesn't matter about sending right now. We're just looking at improving your tactics. Okay. Okay. I've, I think the crux will be this. But I can't yeah. even, even looking at it, I can't imagine how you get to that hold there. So I, I think we should just focus on this crux to begin with and just see how we get on, so. Section we're better off. It's a mean last hold. Is it? <laughs> yeah, it's not. Um, it's not. <laughs> it's not quite the victory jug that you want at the end of your climb. <laughs> no. Yeah. Bastards. <laughs> so that was from the start of the crux to the end, and yeah. like if 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 you're climbing at your limit, you're never gonna do crux to the end first go. So, There's no right or wrong here, it's just what feels be best for you. Just getting my right foot up there seems absolutely insane. Go on, let me suck that heel in. Yeah, nice, Mike. Really good. Come on. Great. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Come on. And swap feet if you can. That's it. Yeah, yeah swap feet and right foot up. <sighs> And then left again. That's it. And we get matched in. Solid. There we go. So forget what I was saying about going straight from crooks to the top. <sighs> nice work, man. Yeah. I did Ooh. not think I would be able to get my feet like this. I felt like I was in a tiny little ball. The one thing I did say is when you placed your heel, you kind of, you, you kind of like just like kind of slopped it on the hold if that yeah. makes sense so important with heel is to actually just pull with your hamstring so get it behind the hold then pull with it right okay because if it's not seated properly behind the hold it won't work and are you properly cranking on it like, like not properly i'm just like i'm just making sure because I guess all I'm doing there is I'm taking the weight of my big chunky legs off. Yeah, okay. Well, they're not very chunky, are they? But, you know, but <laughs> legs are heavy. Yeah. You know, even if you've got skinny legs like me. Yeah. So what I'd say is you've just managed to go from here to the top. Yeah. Which is bloody great. I mean, this, I can tell you for a fact, this isn't a limit climb for you. You could climb harder than this. So with this particular climb here, we know you can do it from here, but can you consistently do it from here? You want me to do it again? <laughs> no, no, I, I don't know. But <laughs> the way to prove that is add one move into it. Yeah. And just keep adding into that. And then as you do it, every time you come down, have a look at all the holds, remember your hand sequence and remember the feet as well. 
make sure that you remember what you've already done. Right, because okay. if, if this isn't solid up here, then all that's going to happen is you'll link a move into it and the chances are you'll be more tired than last time. You'll get up there and you won't remember what to do <laughs> and you'll just fall off. Right, okay. So in order to guarantee that, that constant success rate, that constant feeding into the program, is by making sure that you're constantly updating it. Yeah. And the way to do that is just make sure that, again, you run over the hands, close your eyes, can you remember the hands? Run over the feet, close your eyes, can you remember the feet? Okay. And just keep building into it. This concept was something that Matt repeated multiple times during our session. Visualisation. Going through the moves you've just done, or plan to do, in your head. Ideally, you can get to a point that you don't need to look at the wall to visualise what you're going to do. The idea being that when you're tired and you've just got through the crux, you don't have to think so hard to remember what the beta is because you've rehearsed it mentally before pulling on. Okay, so you've currently done it from here, no, from, from here from, to the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so not, the obvious thing now is just to try and start adding a move into it. So I'd say this move looks fairly all right. I would say yeah, that move. This looks move looks brutal. tricky. I think. Um, how are you feeling about that? I've not, I've not tried it. Yeah, maybe it might be worth just trying these individual moves. Yeah. Um, just to get a bit of an idea of them and just see how you get on. Nice. Oh, solid, man. Oh, f that is absolutely miles away, though. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I could crank up to that. So I reckon... Jesus Christ. I reckon with your feet where they were then, I think you're going to struggle. But... So like that, you're going to struggle. Yeah. But like that, I reckon you'll find that a lot easier. Nice. That's it. That's solid, Mike. Really good. That's so, not where I want to be. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Would you say that you know what beat you want to use on these bits? You might not have executed it perfectly then, but you've... Individually now, you've done all of the crux moves. Uh, I've not done the start. So we haven't done the start move yet, but don't worry about that just yet. I reckon we think about that towards the end. Okay. Let's just think about right now, just adding this move into what you've already done. And like I say, don't be afraid to make sure that you stand right in front of it and do all the hand motions. So here, cut loose to that. This is, I think this is the hardest move. Yeah. Go to there, then swap the feet back. Nice one, come on. Really good. That's it. Where was that from? From from here. Wow, so it's from one move in. Well, two moves in. Yeah. I think now you should start trying it from the ground. <sighs> but I reckon what you should do, I'm gonna give it a good brush. Obviously that'll help improve the grip. What you need to do now is focus on that memory. You yeah. need to make sure you don't make a single mistake when you get on. So, yeah, so I, I, I cut loose here to get the right foot into there. Nothing wrong with cutting loose. Okay. Sometimes cutting loose is the fastest way to do something and okay. fast is good. Okay. So, you know, if cutting your feet and just moving them fast is the best way to do it, then it's totally cool. Cool. Before attempting the boulder from the ground, Matt had me visualise the moves with my eyes shut lying down. This feels kinda embarrassing doing this in the gym for a boulder at this level, as this is something you normally only see pros doing, but it actually works. And after a little meditation session with Matt to try and chill out, I felt completely ready and confident to send this boulder. Breathe, focus on your breathing as you're climbing as well. Keep it going. Focus on breathing. That's it. 
<laughs> nice one, man. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that was so easy. <laughs> Made a couple of mistakes as well, and it was like... Yeah, yeah, that was great, right, though, yeah. man. Can you see it? that constant repetition of going over it and yeah. over it and over it? Like, the more you do it, the more solid you get it, the easier the climbs feel. Yeah, yep. yes. <laughs> that's, the, that's the first time I've ever done a V5 in one session. Really? Yeah. Man, that's epic, isn't yeah. it? I couldn't believe that I basically just sent a V5 without even falling off once. Have I been bouldering wrong this whole time? Like, is it supposed to be this chill? By the time it came for me to actually send this, I was so dialed in. In my head, I was like, there is no way I am not sending this boulder. I knew every move, and yes, it is still a bit messy, but topping a problem of this difficulty on my first attempt from the ground is completely new territory for me. This is like bouldering an easy mode. But before I completely convert to the map method, I gotta see if I can do it by myself. So I took a few days off, then went back to the gym, alone this time, with my heart set on bagging something hard. Something harder than I'd ever done before. How about a brand new colour? Sure, I've done a yellow, even done a soft purple, but blue, that's never happened. That's graded hard. This steep one looked like it suited my style. Big holds with powerful moves. So I did the whole warm up thing. The scapular pulls, the stretches, the horse squats, the fingerboarding. Then I did the drills on the easy boulders. Then I stared at the climb and visualized the moves. Then I started from the middle of the climb and worked on the crux first. And what do you know? I got the second half first time again. I figured the crux might actually be at the start and I was right. So I spent time thinking about this heel, trying to be as efficient as possible. Does it go in front of the hand or behind? Behind. More thinking. This hold, forget about it. It's garbage, just use the crimp. Then it was time for brushing, coffee, more visualization, and then it was on. If I cut loose, it's over. this gym is supposed to be V6 slash 7, but this is likely very, very soft. But it is definitely the hardest boulder I've topped to date. And to send it on the second attempt from the ground, I genuinely am just better. The proof is in the pudding. I think this proves that for a beginner to intermediate climber up to V5, V6, you're probably stronger and fitter than the grade that you climb would suggest. For me, despite being strong, I just don't know how to climb well. I need to work on visualization, route reading, and getting my beta sorted out. Lugging up climbs with crap technique using strength alone can only get you so far, and I think that's why I hit that plateau. A more deliberate, slower, more thoughtful approach is the low-hanging fruit when it comes to reaching your potential at the lower grades. I really can't thank Matt enough for his guidance and coaching with us. Let me know if you think we should do more coaching sessions together, if you got something from this. And give Matt a follow on his YouTube channel. He's just started it and it's absolutely brilliant. If you want to see someone crushing hard boulders and roots, go check it out. And if you think you can benefit from some coaching with him, get in touch with them. I can't recommend it enough. All the info is down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, subscribe if you haven't already and check back next week for a brand new video. Thanks very much for watching. Peace.